open in this computer. There we go. So we're, we are good now. So good morning, everybody. We're live on, not only are we live on Facebook, but we're live on a somewhat a different kind of uh, system here this morning. I just had to get some things together here this morning as we went forward to our uh, Saturday morning teaching. For me, it's in the morning, guys, but for you guys, it's evening, correct? Yes, it's evening nice for you us. guys. And you yes. like you guys look you guys look so fresh, hey man. Uh, <laughs> yes, I come yes. in the morning and and uh, you know I jump out of bed. I'm getting ready to go, and you know I'm run. I'm doing a hundred million things in the morning. So I'm I'm I'm, a, I'm a, I wake up real early every morning, uh, getting ready for for the day, getting ready for everything. So uh, you know I just yes. I just I just like to get up early. I I love to go to bed late, and I love to get up early. Amen. So uh, there's a lot of mm. things to do in the body of Christ and it just seems like we don't have enough time amen to to complete them uh but to God be all the glory i just thank god uh for for everything that that he does for everything that he is uh, and this morning i want to talk about let's go to the book of genesis here this morning i'm hoping that pastor zia will be able to join us here this morning i know i know you guys have been very patient with us um, and, and I, and I know that you all need those funds, uh, so that you can continue, uh, your missions there in, in your ministry. And, uh, like, like I said before, I'll repeat myself again. It, it's like the, 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 there, there's an issue with security, nothing to do with you guys, nothing to do with us. It's just the bank. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to, we want to establish something that is reoccurring, so, uh, so this morning, Gracie and I, uh, later on, we'll be, uh, we'll be going to the bank and setting that, that up. That way, that'll be taken care of, and you don't won't have to worry about that. I know that Pastor Corweta, uh, because he is New Life Church Kenya, he gets a little bit more than everyone else. But, uh, you know, that, that I'm not discriminating or anything like that. It's just that he is under, under our name of New Life Church DFW. And he is actually New Life Church. So, but you guys will still be getting uh, a, a portion of some mission help so that you guys can continue, uh, you know, doing what you're doing. And, and I, you know, and like I said, I, I love, I love what you guys are doing out there. And you know, it's not easy. It's not easy. I, I understand that, that it's not easy. I understand that, uh, that it does take finances. You know, and, and because it takes finances, you know, I understand um, that it's difficult. It's difficult, and and here in America, we're we're blessed. We're we're blessed to uh, to be able to, you know, people work, people have finances, you know, and 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 they're able to support uh, the ministry. And because of that, you know, we're able to expand and give to the people. You know, uh, so so we're blessed. You know, and to God be the glory. And here in the next two years, uh, Lord willing, uh, God is doing something awesome, amazing that we've been praying for. And and at his time, it is coming. So in the next two years, there, there will be a physical move of New Life Church. And we don't know where we're going to be. We're going to be somewhere in the DFW, amen. Uh, uh, more than likely in our own little building somewhere. Uh, and we don't know yet, but anyway, you know, to God be the glory, amen, glory to God here this morning. Uh, we're going to the book of Genesis chapter 4, we're going to Genesis chapter 4, verse number, let's go to verse number 9, and the Bible uh, talks about uh, perhaps one of the most thought-provoking uh, verses in the Bible that is asked by Cain, and, and, and the reason it is thought-provoking is because it provokes our, our, our minds, right? It pr provokes our minds by us uh, asking ourselves, asking ourselves about each other. Am I my brother's keeper? And, and obviously, you know, that, that goes to, of course, the, the whole picture, the overall picture of the church, the overall picture of Israel and how we've been that wild olive branch and we've been engrafted into we've been engrafted into that olive vine amen that vine of the olive in which the israelites are the are the chosen people of of god and because they are the chosen people of god the church becomes or is that wild olive branch amen that and literally cain representing representing the 
not only the world that did not want to sacrifice according to obedience, for God said it, it, obedience is better than sacrifice. Uh, Abel was able to sacrifice through obedience, and he, and he literally, I believe, <clears throat> I believe, and, and when you read the word of God, I believe that the obedience of, of Abel was that he literally sacrificed a lamb. And the reason I say that is because when God covered his parents, Adam and Eve, the Bible says that he covered them with a tunic of skin. And that tunic of skin, obviously we know that there is life in the blood. So whatever animal it was, it represented the Lamb of God. It was a symbolism of him who was to come. So Cain, Cain kills his brother, you know, because he had, he, because God accepted the offering of Abel. And, you know, God is a God of order and, and God is, has created all things. Everything that has been created has been created by God. And whether people in this world, whether they want to accept it, whether they don't want to accept it, whether they want to don't believe it, whether, whether they want to do right according to their own eyes, you know, uh, whatever it is, there is only one absolute truth. And we choose to believe that God through Jesus is that Jesus is the son of God. Amen. He is the way he is the truth and he is the life. That is where we all stand. And that is what we choose to preach and choose to believe. Amen. That is what we keep. That is what we cling on to. That is what's going to save us. And Cain did not want to accept that. He did not want to accept that one way that one truth, that one life. Amen. So what did he do? He disagreed with the, with the sacrifice that Abel did. And he got upset. The Bible said, let's go to the book of Genesis chapter four. Let's start with verse three. And, uh, and, the, and you know what, let's start with verse one. And the Bible says, now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain. And said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, this time his brother Abel. So the first will be last. And the last will be first. The first Cain also represents Israel. That killed, sacrificed, you know, because they were blinded. And that the light came into the world, but they did not perceive it. They didn't understand it. And they killed Abel. He killed Abel. And first Cain was born. In other words, the Israelites were chosen first. Abel was chosen, was born second. The church second. Uh, Adam first. Eve second. Born through Adam, by, in the rib, by the rib of Adam, which represents the church as well. Um, and, and of course, it says, now she bore again, this time his brother Abel. Now, Abel was a keeper of the sheep. You know, uh, Cain, Cain also, the Bible says that he left with a mark. So the Israelites, throughout their lives, they were with a mark. And nobody was to harm them. And anybody that did harm to them has been cursed by God. You know, all, anybody who, who curses an Israelite is cursed by God. Because the Bible says that he told Adam, anybody curse, you be cursed, uh, we curse by God. You be blessed, we blessed by God. So when Cain killed Abel, the Bible later on says that he left with a mark. And, and the Lord said to him in verse 15, therefore, whoever kills Cain, vengeance will be taken on him sevenfold. And that's happened with the Israelites. Anytime that somebody has done any harm to the Israelites, you know, even though God allows it, God allows certain things to happen to the Israelites because they are his children, his chosen. We being the church, We've been engrafted. We are the Gentiles being engrafted into that vine. We are the wild olive branch. 
that have been engrafted. And we now, we have the, the blessings. We, 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 we endure, we receive the blessings of Abraham. We, the, 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 the cho we are now God's chosen people. The Bible says that we are now royal priesthood, chosen generation, God's special people. And that comes because the last will be first. And now, because the first will be last, the first will be last, and they will definitely go through a time of tribulation, a time of deception, but eventually they will all bow down and believe that Christ Jesus is the Messiah after the deception. The church that was last will not be first. We will be raptured. We will be with the Lord. Anyway, that is a, whole, a, a symbolism picture uh, uh, of the church, and it's found in these two names. And Abel and Cain, and there's a lot of other things. Obviously, Cain represents also the, the even the Pharisees, where they did not want to lose their power in the times of Rome. You know, they didn't want to lose their position. They didn't want to lose their their their, their them being worshipped and them being uh, um, sitting in in the places of honor and the 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 riches, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So when Jesus came. Uh, that he was the son of Ma the son of God. Of course, they shouted blasphemy, blasphemy, and just like Cain did not agree with that sacrifice, Jesus being the Messiah. And so we go to verse two. Then she bore again the time of his brother Abel, and now Abel was a keeper of the sheep. A keeper of the sheep. It is our shepherd. So Christ being the shepherd, he is the shepherd. He is the shepherd. He is our shepherd. And we and we perceive, or we we can understand, we can discern, we can hear the voice of the shepherd. We understand the voice of the shepherd, and so he knows us. Amen. And but Cain was a tiller of the ground. He was a tiller of the ground. He was working the ground. Um, and and of course, a tiller of the ground from the very beginning, from the beginning of Adam, the sin of Adam. Of course, he was the tiller of the ground. He was chosen to be put in the in the garden and to steal the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass <clears throat> that Cain brought an offering. And of course, he brought an offering of fruit. And this is why I believe that Abel brought either the lamb or in, in other words, he obeyed because of the blood. And he knew that there was an atonement in the blood. And because of the blood, there was an atonement. Why? Because he heard, he obeyed the voice of his father and his mother. That's why the Bible says, he who honors his father and mother, well, they will live a long life. Of course, uh, he obeyed. He, he knew. He knew of the sacrifice of the blood. That was the atonement of their of his parents, uh, where God created for them a covering, and that came through a tunic of skin, and it was a tunic of skin. Obviously, a tunic of skin. You all know this very well. It has to come, right? It has to come from an animal. So of course, Abel was was aware of this. He obeyed, but Judah, I mean Judas, Cain didn't obey. He did not obey, and he disagreed, and he disagreed, and what did he do? He killed his brother, and of course, the Bible says that Cain brought in an offering, a fruit of the ground of the Lord, and Abel also brought the firstborn of his flock. So obviously, he was a shepherd. He was a keeper of the sheep. So guess what? That was a lamb. He had to brought a lamb, uh, and also brought the firstborn of his flock and of their fat, a sweet aroma unto God. A, a sweet aroma unto God represents obedience, represents our practice, practicing uh, his statutes, uh, walking with the Lord is always, always a sweet aroma unto God. And the Lord respected Abel. Amen. I, 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 always, I always teach about how we are searching for respect, as, especially as men. Uh, we grow up with this sense that we're we're looking for respect and we're we're you know we demand respect obviously the bible says even biblically that our wives they submit to us as the head of the house and of course not only submission but but in a sense of respect 
But that comes because we love them, because we care for them, because we do for them, because we protect them. Just like Christ loved us and he died for us, you know, we submit to God. We respect the Lord. There is reverence unto him. And, but, but the, and the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain. And, of course, you know, you can, you can point that to the Pharisees and those that uh, crucified Jesus Christ. Uh, they knew that, you know, they've, they've read the book, they've read the Pentateuch, they've read the law, they, they knew all this, and, and, and they knew, they knew that what they were doing uh, was not being respected by God. And here, Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, a man from Nazareth, a, a son of a carpenter, you know, he was going to be the sacrifice uh, of God. And, and of course, you know, it, it boiled them. It, it, it just, because they were going to lose everything they had worked so hard for. And of course, then Cain was very angry. And, you know, the Israelites, the, the Pharisees, the ones that crucified Christ, they were very angry as well. And his countenance fell. <clears throat> and then, of course, the Bible says in verse 6, chapter 4, Genesis, so the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, watch this. <clears throat> if you do well, will you not be accepted? You know, the, this is literally the Lord saying, hey, your labor is not being done in vain. If you believe in me, if, in other words, if you do well, listen to me, if you obey my commandments, which is to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as you love yourself, in other words, be your brother's keeper, amen, will I not, will, 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 uh, the Bible says, will, will, why are you angry as your commandment has fallen, com countenance has fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? In other words, we will be accepted because we are obeying God's commands. And if you do not do well, in other words, if you disobey, sin lies at the door. That's what the Bible says, that sin lies at the door in, in a place of disobedience. And its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. In other words, God has given us the spirit of the Lord, the, the Holy Spirit, so that we can have self-control, so that we will uh, rule over um, so, uh, rule over our sin or, or desires or the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the world, because we know that sin lies at the door, amen, and its desire, right, is for what? Its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. But now Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass. And as they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and what? And the, what does the Bible says? He killed him. Amen. So, so we're talking about here this morning about being our brother's keeper. Obviously, this is one of the most thought-provoking questions in the whole Bible. And we ask ourselves, am I being my brother's keeper? Uh, that's why Jesus uh, commanded us not only to preach the gospel unto the ends of the world, but also he commanded us to make disciples. Making disciples is a lot of it has to do with a relationship. Uh, we have a relationship with one another. You know, I'm hoping that even thousands of thousands of miles in an ocean away, you know, that I'm, that I can be my brother's keeper in as much as possibly I can, not only financially, but also spiritually and physically. Obviously, spiritually, I can't be there, but spiritually, I'm there with you, uh, teaching you and guiding you and, and hoping that I can, I can be your support in any kind. Uh, especially financially. Man. Uh, so, oh, man. but as, as, as God had accepted Abel's offering, but not his own. And then the Lord inquired concerning Abel and came response. And of course he responded with that most thought provoking uh, question in the Bible. Am I my brother's keeper? So um, we want to ask each other, are, are we being our brother's keeper? You know, I think that's a, a, a question that we have to ask each other. Are we being our brother's keeper? And do we have a responsibility to watch out for and care for one another? And obviously the answer is yes. And yes. our responsibilities to one another goes as far as, number one, 
we are to love one another, all right? This is our responsibilities to one another as being our brother's keeper. Amen. God bless you, bro. Pastor Zia. God bless you. Uh, like I was reminding everybody here this morning, I promise you that your missions funds is on the way. Like I said, we had a little hold up with our bank, a security issue with our bank. Uh, nothing to do with you, nothing to do with us. It's just the bank. Uh, and I know I could go to Western Union and just do it that way, but I don't, I don't want to do it that way. I want to do it with the bank. That way everything's being done properly in the bank. You know, we like to do everything legit and square so that you can do you so that you can have a resent, a rescinding, uh, um, missions fund, uh, there for your missions. Uh, but as, as we, as we ask ourselves, am I, my brother's keeper here this morning? And, you know, what is our responsibility to watch out for and to care for each other? And our responsibilities to one another, number one, is we are to love each other. And, of course, why? Because Jesus commanded that. And we go to the book of John. We're going to flip right through, through the whole Bible here this morning as we're getting into the Word of God because the Word of God has power. It is alive in the name of Jesus. And, of course, that was the new commandment. That was the new commandment. Uh, established by Christ Jesus. And the Bible says in the book of John, chapter 13, verse 34, he says, a new commandment I give you. So this is the new commandment, amen, that you love one another as I have loved you and that you also love one another. By this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. And if we have love for one another, we have patience for one another, we're kind to each other, we're gentle to each other, we're faithful to each other, we're true to each other. Uh, you know, if, if we do these things towards each other, uh, bearing all things, you know, um, believing in all things, hoping in all things, these are the things that love will never fail and love will never fail uh, with us because we are brothers and we love one another. And that was the new commandment. The new commandment basically that if you love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, you literally, you literally fulfill the four commandments, the first four commandments. If you love your neighbor, if you love like if you if you love your neighbor as you love yourself, you would fulfill the other six commandments. So loving God and loving your neighbor as you love yourself literally fulfills, amen. Literally fulfills um, all the ten commandments, amen. Uh, the Bible says in chapter fifteen of the book of John, verse number 12. The Bible is very clear about this. And it says, this is my commandment that, that you, or uh, this is my commandment that you be full. I mean, I'm sorry, that you love one another as I have loved you. Verse 17, the Bible says, those things I command you that you love one another. So our responsibilities to number to, to, to one another is obviously to love one another. Why? Because Jesus commanded it. Number two, because it, it was taught even by the apostles' doctrine. And as we read in the apostles' doctrine in the book of Romans, you know, Paul uh, being the, 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 the apostle of apostles, the Pharisee of Pharisees, amen, uh, the ones that he considered himself to be least of, uh, he was the one that encountered Christ uh, and, and blinded him, and then three days later, the scales come off, and this is the same Paul that was murdering Christians, and now he was teaching the Christians, amen, and, and he taught this, Paul taught this in the book of Romans, chapter 13, verse 8, he also taught, saying, oh, no one anything except to love one another, so in reality, you know, we don't owe each other anything, but to love one another and by loving one another, then the fruit of the love that we have for one another is that we take care of each other. You know, that, that we take you, uh, that we take care of each other physically, spiritually, financially, you know, in any way, in, in any of our needs, we're there for each other. Amen. Uh, we're friends and we die for each other. We love each other. Amen. And, and this is, and this is the, uh, the commandment. This is the, 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 the belief of loving one another. And Paul says, oh, no one, anything except, here we go. He says, except this, 
brothers and sisters, to love one another. For he who loves another, for he who loves another has fulfilled the law. So by, so by loving one another, the Bible is very clear that we fulfill the law. That's why Christ died for us and he did not abolish the law. You know, but but he didn't abolish the law, but he fulfilled the law. Amen. And in loving us and loving each other, he fulfilled the law in, in that way for each other. Amen. So, I mean, just just amazing what the Bible is teaching about being our brother's keeper. And then, of course, we go, we continue to teach here this morning on, 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 on the responsibilities that we have for one another as brothers. And we are keeping each other. Number one, by loving one another and biblically because Jesus commanded. Number two is because Jesus, I mean, because Paul taught it in the book of Thessalonians. Let's go to the first, first Thessalonians. And I encourage you this morning, whoever's watching, whoever's going to watch later on, uh, that as we go, uh, I always encourage highlighters. I love highlighters because I'm able to highlight my, my Bible. And, you know, uh, anyway, just highlight your Bible that way, you know, when you're reading your Bible, you're like, there's a reason why I highlighted that. And, of course, you go back and, and you know where your verses are at. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 9, Paul says, But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God. So this love that we have for one another, you know, we don't have to be reminded by religion. We don't have to be re reminded by the church, which we are. That's what preaching is, a, a remembrance of, of, of what the Bible says, right? A gathering together and encouraging, a teaching, a reproofing, a rebuking. But Paul says, look, concerning this brotherly love that I'm teaching you right now, or concerning this brotherly love that you've already read in the book of John and you read in the book of Romans, that to love one another, but concerning this brotherly love, you have no need. There is no need that I should write to you. In other words, he was telling the Thessalonians, hey, listen, I know that the love that you have for one another is genuine and you have proved it, you know, because the Thessalonians, they were givers, man. They were such a, a tight niche uh, church. And he says, yourselves are taught by God and you are taught by God to love one another. What does that mean? Well, now the Bible says that Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the father and he has given us a what? A helper, a teacher a comforter, somebody who teaches us, right? Because he is the spirit of God. He is the person that teaches us, that comforts us, uh, that, that causes us more than anything to love one another. Amen. So Amen. loving one another is, is instructed, it's commanded. And also not only that, but it was instructed by Peter. Let's go to the, let's go to the first letter of Peter chapter one verse 22 and let's go see what the bible says here in verse 22 talking about the enduring word but since you have purified your souls in in obeying the truth so as we obey the truth we are literally purifying our soul we are cleansing our soul we are preparing our soul there is a seal being put in our soul for the lord for the day of the lord will come uh so since you are purified, your souls in, in obeying the truth, how? Through the spirit in sincere love of the brethren. Of the brethren, says, love one another fervently with a pure heart. Verse 23, having been born again. Here we go, because that's the, that's, the that's the whole point. You have to be born again. Not of a corruptible seed. In other words, we're, we, we, we can't go back into our mother's womb and be born that way. You will still be corruptible, but in incorruptible, that is in the spirit, the spiritual seed, the incorruptible way through the word of God. And it's done through the word of God, Christ Jesus, which lives and abides forever because all flesh is a grass and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass, the, the grass withers. And the flower falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. That, hallelujah. This is why this is the word that as we read every day, that as we get into the word every day, 
we are born again, not of the corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible seed of Christ Jesus, who is in us. Greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. And obeying the truth, knowing that we love God, that we love one another, as the Holy Spirit teaches us, is it is purifying our soul as we obey the truth. Amen. And having been born again, okay, not of the corruptible, but of the incorruptible seed. Amen. Uh, not only that, but it was stressed by John. Uh, let's go to the fir first letter of John. It's all over the Bible. And this is why I love the Bible, because uh, you can't get away uh, with saying, well, show me in the Bible. We're, we're showing you in the Bible about the love that we need to have for one another. And having love for one another includes being our brother's keeper. Amen. And we are our brother's keeper financially, spiritually, physically, emotionally. We're forgiving. We forgive one another. We teach each other. This is being our brother's keeper. Amen. Not talking bad about each other. Not, not all these things that I'm going to teach here in a little bit, but, but I'm setting down the, the foundation of what it is, the responsibilities that we have for one another. And one of them, of course, it is taught by God to love one another. And it is stressed by John in the first letter of John as well, chapter 3, verse 11, where the Bible says, For this is the message that you heard from the beginning. So from the very beginning, then the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. In the beginning, he created the heavens and the earth. You know, this is what you have heard from the beginning. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of the wicked one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brothers were righteous. Amen. So the Bible says in verse 13, do not marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you, for we know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. This morning, I was just um, meditating on the word of God, uh, meditating on Christ Jesus was the one that, broke bread with the disciples on the day before Passover and, and, and he shared the bread with Judas, even with the man that was going to betray him. Here is Judas. Here is the Lord breaking bread with him. And then eventually Judas takes the bread and he takes the bread with him as he's about to betray Christ. So many times, what does that mean? Many times we can have Christ in us, we can have the word in us, amen, but we have already committed ourselves to go sin and to betray the Lord. And this is why we got to continue preaching the word of God. We got to continue in prayer. We got to continue um, being our brother's keeper, reproofing one another, uh, rebuking one another, encouraging one another, ex exhorting one another, building each other up, teaching each other, guiding each other. Amen. Uh, preparing a way for each other uh, because the days of, of the Lord, it, it is coming. It is coming. And whoever hates his brother, and if there's any hate, any unforgiveness, any thought of unforgiveness, you know, we encourage each other to uh, quickly, quickly forgive. You know, quickly, Amen. quickly forgive. Take it to the throne room. It, 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 there's going to be times where we are going to be offended by each other. You know, we are, we are, we're human beings. Uh, somebody's going to offend you. Somebody's going to, to let you down. Uh, that's why we don't set our eyes on man, but we set our eyes on the Lord. Amen. That's who we set our eyes on. And we know that he is a judge of all the brethren. Amen. And the Bible says in first John chapter four, or let's go to verse 23 of chapter three of the first letter of John in the Bible says in verse 23, it says, and this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ and love one another 
as he gave us commandment. Chapter 4, verse 7, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Amen. So, I mean, very, very, very clear. Verse 11 through 12. The Bible says uh, in verse 11, where am I? 10. Uh, let me see, where's 11? Beloved, if God is love, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfected. How? In us, the Bible says. So this love has been perfected his name is christ jesus he is in us he is with us he comes upon us uh he's given us a helper a teacher a comforter to love that teaches us to love one another in other words we don't have to be taught by religion we don't have to be taught by man to love one another but this love is already in us it is in us the bible says in second john uh chapter five you can read second uh john uh second uh, is it Second John? Yeah, Second John, verse five, and the Bible says, "And now, I plead with you, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment to you, but that which we have had from the beginning, that we love one another. This is love, that we walk according to His commandments. This is the commandment that you have heard from the beginning, and you." should walk in it amen glory to god so this is talking about uh there was a letter a greeting to the elect lady the elder the the elect lady and her children whom i loved in truth and not only i but also all those who have known the truth because the truth which abides in us will be with us forever amen glory to god so so it's a responsibility as being our brother's keeper to love one another. Not only that, but not only is it, not only is that one of the responsibilities is that we ought to love one another, but how we show our love to one another also is very important. So how are we going to show our love to one another? One way is that we receive one another. Amen. Uh, we are here, especially as the church. Our church has to be open so that we can receive each other. Our homes have to be open so that we receive each other. Our hearts have to be open so that we can receive each other. You know, anything that God has given us, entrusted us, uh, it is open uh, for one another. The prodigal son's father, his arms were open and he received his son, Jesus Christ. His arms are open and he's receiving us just as what the Bible says in Romans chapter 15 verse number seven and says that we are to receive one another in verse seven says therefore receive one another just as christ also received us so even as we were yet sinners the bible says even as we were yet sinners christ died for us amen so receive one another just as christ also received us to the glory of God. Amen. So all this is done for the glory of God. You want to glorify God? You receive one another. You love one another. You, you take care of one another. You be your brother's keeper. And that will always, always glorify the Father who is in heaven. Not only that, but the Bible calls us to edify each other. What does the word edify mean? The word edify means to build each other up. We are not to tear each other down, but we build each other up. We believe in each other. We encourage each other. We teach each other. We, 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 all these things are done. Even when we reprove, even when we um, uh, 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 teach each other, uh, even when we correct each other or rebuke each other, it is done for one purpose, and that is for the edification of each other. So the Bible says, in Romans chapter 15, verse number 19, the Bible says, in, in mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit, it is of God, so that from Jerusalem and from round about 
uh, liquor, uh, Laricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. So uh, verse 18 says, for I will not dare to speak of any of these things which Christ has not accomplished through me in word and in deed to make the Gentiles obedience, but in mighty signs. In other words, the gospel is not just words, but it is power. And it is, and it is, and it is, and it is through the mighty word of God that signs and wonders by the power of the spirit of God so that from Jerusalem to Ronald Edicum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. So also I have made it my gain to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest there should build another man's foundation. But as it is written, to whom he was, he was not announced, they shall see. And those who have not heard shall understand. So we should edify each other, continue to edify each other, through the word of God. Not only that, not only our responsibility to one another to be our brother's keeper is to love one another by commanded by Jesus, taught by Paul, instructed by Peter, stressed by the first lit by the letters of John, but also we got to show our love for one another how by receiving one another. There is no prejudice, there is no prejudice in this, but we receive one another with open arms in our homes and our churches in our businesses, we receive one another, we edify each other, and also we serve one another. Go to the book of Galatians, <clears throat> chapter 5, verse 13, and the Bible says, For you, brethren, have been called to liberally, to liberally only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love to serve one another. In other words, Uh, this love that we have another for one another is an opportunity for us <clears throat> to serve each other and not for an opportunity for the flesh to satisfy itself. Amen. But we, the love that God has given us is so that we can serve one another. <clears throat> not only that, but to bear one another's burdens. And that is found in Galatians chapter six, verse one through two, brethren, <clears throat> if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted, bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Amen. So loving one another, <clears throat> there's a way to do it. There's a way to show it. And I keep repeating myself so that we can, you know, remember this so that so that it can abide in our soul, abide in our spirit. Uh, because when all this abides in you, then you're able to apply it. <clears throat> But as brothers, even when we're <clears throat> thousands of miles away or even if we're around the block with one another, we receive each other. We edify each other. We build each other up. We serve one another. We're here to serve each other. And we're here to bear, to carry <clears throat> each other's burdens. As a brother, I see you struggling. I say, hey, you know what? Let me lift up that burden for you. Let me carry that for you while you gain your strength. And then you can continue carrying your burden. Amen. Uh, how about this? forgiving one another the bible talks about how can we show each other's to be a brother's keeper well how about forgiving one another the bible says in, in chapter uh chapter four the book of ephesians verse 32 another way to show our love for each other is that we forgive one another and the bible says and be kind to one another tender-hearted forgiving one another just as god in christ forgave you amen so another way to show up that we are a brother's keeper is that we forgive one another another way is that we submit to one another and that is found in ephesians chapter 5 <clears throat> verse 21 the bible says submitting to one another in the fear of god amen so it's the fear of the lord that is the beginning of wisdom coming to the knowledge of the holy one 
that bringeth understanding, understanding that being my brother's keeper, it is a commandment by God. It has been taught by the word of God. It, 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 shows, it shows that I love you. It shows that you love me. How? That we receive one another. It doesn't matter where, you're, where you are. It doesn't matter where you're from. I will receive you. I will edify you. I'm going to serve you. I'm going to bear your burden. Amen. Lift up your burden as much as I can. And, and I'm going to submit to you as well. Submitting to one another <clears throat> is another way <clears throat> that we show the Lord that we have reverence in him, that we obey him. Amen. Uh, not only that, but we're exhorting one another. The Bible says, here's another way to be your brother's keeper, exhorting one another. And that is found in the book of Hebrews. Turn with me to the book of Hebrews, chapter 3, verse 12 through 13. The Bible says this. This is talking about exhorting one another. Exhorting is another word of encouragement. So we encourage one another. And it says, beware, brethren, lest there be any, any of you in an evil heart of unbelief and departing. The Bible says, and departing from the living God. But the Bible says, but exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end while it is said today, if you will hear his voice, do not hearten your hearts as in the rebellion. So hardening our hearts, the heart of stone is literally a heart of rebellion. But God has called us to exhort one another, to encourage one another daily. Every day we encourage one another. Every day I receive messages from you guys. Every day always encourage me. Pastor Corwitha, Naaman, all you guys. All you guys always send me verses. Uh, you, you know, you like our polls. You know, you were always, we're, we're always together. You and I, you guys and me are brothers. We're brothers. Even though you're thousands of miles away, I consider you my brothers. And it is my responsibility to love you, you know, to receive you, to edify you, to serve you, to bear with you your burdens to forgive one another, amen, because there's going to be a time where we're going to have to forgive one another, uh, submit to one another, exhort one another, and also consider one another. Let's go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse number 3, uh, chapter 10, uh, I'm sorry, Hebrews chapter 3, I'm sorry, Hebrews chapter 10, I'm so sorry, there's so many verses, uh, this is talking about considering one another, so what is it to consider one another? Well, it's not all about, in other words, it's not all about me. It's not all about our, our ministry, but we have to consider one another, amen? We have to consider our wives. We have to consider our children. We have to consider those that minister around us. We have to consider each other as the Bible teaches in the book of Hebrews, amen? Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and the Bible says, and let us consider one another in order to steer up love and good works, not forsake. So how do you consider one another? Number one, do not forsake to assemble. Do not forsake together of ourselves. Why? As in the manner of some. So what do we do when we consider one another and we gather each other? We exhort one another. Uh, how much? As much, the more as you see the day approaches. So, so the more we see the signs of the day that is approaching, the more we have to consider one another. The more we have to be around each other. The more we have to receive each other. The more we edify each other. The more we're serving each other. The more we're bearing each other's burdens. The more we're forgiving each other. The more we're submitting to one another. The, the more we're considering to coming together. How? By being hospitable to one another. And that is found. You cannot be hospitable to one another if you're unable to gather or be around each other. 
And in First Peter chapter 4, verse 8 through 9, this is talking about serving for God's glory. And let's get some context out of it in verse 7. But the end of all things is at hand. In other words, this is at hand. It's close. Before be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another, how? Without grumbling, as each one has received a gift. This is why the gifts that God has given us, he has given us gifts uh, to exercise your ministry of reconciliation. And these gifts that God has given the church is to edify the church, to minister to one another, how? As good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God has supplied, that in all things, that in all things, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. So, like I said, being our brother's keeper is, I truly believe, is one thing that we are doing with one another uh, as being our brother's keeper. You are the brother's keeper. I am the brother's keeper. We are doing, we are literally fulfilling this commandment of God this 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 question that was asked by Cain and I guess in a sarcastic way against God and saying what am I going to do am I going to be my brother's keeper well this is a question that we have a responsibility for one another to love each other and to show our love for one another by receiving one another by edifying each other by serving one another by bearing one another's burdens by forgiving one another, by submitting to each other, by exhorting each other, by considering each other, and by being hospitable to each other. Amen. Uh, we're going to continue this teaching uh, next week. As we continue next week, talking about evaluating our role as a brother's keeper. In other words, when do we become a brother? Amen. We'll teach about that next week. <clears throat> and when a brother's overtaken and in fault, what shall we do? And then, of course, we'll conclude with this teaching next week, Lord willing. But anyway, guys, man, I love you guys. Uh, Gracie and I are going uh, to take care of that today. Like I said, there's been an issue with our bank uh, for some reason. I, I, have no, I have no reason. I don't understand why. But uh, as soon as that's taken care of, it's going to be a monthly thing. And we're, we're together in this. You're my brothers. I'm your brother's keeper. You're your brother's keeper. And I love you very much in the name of Jesus. Amen. Um, would anybody want to close with prayer? Uh, Pastor, Pastor Carita, want to close it up with prayer, Pastor? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Pastor, Pastor you, uh, unmute, you, unmute your mic. Unmute your mic, Pastor Carita. Unmute your mic. Unmute your mic. There you go. Go ahead, Pastor Kowita. Sorry about that. Go ahead. Yes. Father, we thank you. We magnify your presence this time. As we come this in this teaching theological school, Father, we give you thanks. I pray for our from India, for our brother from um, I pray for our leadership of New Life, the of you, Pastor Phil, and uh, Pastor Resia, and all the members there. Father, we thank you for the good word that you have given us. To Pastor, that we are our keeper, it is a good topic. We want to thank you. We want to mark your praise. Father, give us the spirit of understanding, the spirit of discernment that we need to know that we are our brother's keeper. We want to thank you want to glorify your name. We magnify your presence this time. Let us be the salt and the light to the nation for action. That we speak and we walk talk. Father, we thank you and we give you the honor. 
we bless your name and in Jesus name I pray. Amen. 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 God bless amen. you guys. I, I will send you a message. I will send you a message here in a little bit. Okay, guys. God bless you. Have a good evening. Say hello to your family. God, God bless you. Pastor. Yes. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, please, please continue to pray for my health. Absolutely. Please continue Absolutely. to pray for my health. Are you feeling? Are you feeling better? Are you yes. feeling better? You're feeling a yes, lot I'm better than before. Yes, I'm getting better, Pastor. But still, I am feeling. Yes, okay. sir, I am better now. Okay, good. Well, just stay. Thank just you, Pastor. Stay, Thank you so much. Stay quarantined and just drink a lot of fluids, and yes, we're all praying you. for you. And know yes, that uh, we love you, and we're, you, we're, we are a brother's keeper. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. That, that Thank goes you so to everybody. God bless you. God bless you.